East Palestine is overwhelmingly white and it's politically conservative. More than 70 percent of the voters in the surrounding county supported Donald Trump in the last election. That shouldn't be relevant, but as you're about to hear, it very much is. Imagine if this had happened in, well, the favored cities of Philadelphia and Detroit. If this affected the rich or the favored poor, it would be the lead of every news channel in the world. But it happened to the poor benighted town of East Palestine, Ohio, whose people are forgotten and in the view of the people who lead this country, forgettable. Yeah, I mean, I don't know where he, uh, Tucker Carlson was when they were trying to dismantle the EPA, which is now uh, maybe the main thing standing between the people of East Palestine and ecological disaster. Uh, look, uh, uh, they, they, they're always ready to take it back to race. But the reality is that uh, we're going to serve everybody. That's how this administration works. Uh, we're not out there to bring resentment. We're out there to bring results. And uh, what our focus was today, and our focus, by the way, from the first hours when we had uh, our Department of Transportation personnel on the ground, uh, from those very first hours in this response all the way through today and well into the future for as long as it takes, focus is to make sure that people get the information they need, the support that they need, and the accountability that is needed for corporations like Norfolk Southern to clean up this mess. There, there is a, a long pattern of, uh, you know, voices like, uh, like that in, in the uh, ideological media, let's call it that, uh, trying to pit people against each other, only to turn around and support policies that are especially hard on uh, working class and low income people of every race. Uh, because one thing, you know how a broken clock is, is right at least twice, twice a day, one thing he's exactly right about is that uh, environmental disasters uh, tend to happen more frequently and more painfully to lower income communities. We call that environmental justice. And yet, if I use those words, I'm sure he'll be the first one to say that we're, uh, we're too woke uh, <laughs> to be paying attention to, uh, to the bread and butter of our jobs. Part of the bread, or but bread and butter of our job is to keep people safe from being harmed or killed, which is what regulation, sometimes an unpopular word, is all about. It's what enforcement is all about. It's what accountability is all about. We restored some of that regulation and enforcement and accountability that was stripped away when we got here. I know that's going on on the EPA side. That's definitely going on with us on the Department of Transportation side. And we will continue that as long as we have uh, this, this honor of serving, because what we came here to do is to protect every American, and I mean every American who comes uh, into contact with our transportation system. It really is amazing how Tucker Carlson tries to paint the whole East Palestine situation as if the people there are purposefully being ignored because they are white and conservative. I'm not sure if Tucker checked, but those white conservative people are literally represented by other white conservative people. Ohio has a Republican governor, a Republican legislature, a Republican-led congressional delegation, and East Palestine itself has a Republican mayor. At what point does it stop being all of those people's faults before it eventually comes landing on the shoulders of a Democrat? Maybe someone can pose that question to Tucker Carlson since he loves just asking questions. Like, Tucker literally says that these people are, quote, forgotten and in the view of the people who lead this country, forgettable. So I'd push back and ask, Forgotten by who? Because they have elected officials. They have a governor who they elected. They have legislators who they elected. If they're forgotten, maybe Tucker should ask those Republican officials who represent them why they forgot them. It really is amazing how Republicans have managed to diffuse all responsibility off of themselves no matter what. Take crime, for example. If there's crime in a blue state, then it's obviously the fault of that Democratic governor or the Democratic legislature. If there's crime in a blue city within a red state, well, then it's the fault of just that city's Democratic leadership. And here, when you've got a Republican mayor, governor, legislator, and electorate, well, then obviously it's the fault of the Secretary of Transportation, because honestly, who else would be to blame? Tucker even tries to cry victim by claiming that East Palestine isn't getting the same attention as Detroit or Philadelphia, which, to be clear, is how Tucker says black people. Right, because issues in minority democratic cities are just the beacon of efficiency and responsiveness. Flint, Michigan, famous for its clean water. Thank God Flint isn't conservative, otherwise they still wouldn't be able to drink that water. Phew. All of which is to say that watching this Tucker Carlson clip goes to show that the mouthpieces for the quote-unquote party of personal responsibility 
aren't all that interested in personal responsibility. I have yet to hear a single Republican blame a single Republican official or their infatuation with deregulation. I have heard them blame any Democrat with an eye shot because the thing about personal responsibility is that it only counts for everyone else. And I want to be clear here, none of this is to say that the federal government shouldn't step in because they should, and they are, and they should do everything they can to help always in every state, and again, they are. But what Tucker and the rest of the GOP are doing is so clearly trying to diffuse responsibility at every turn. They want zero responsibility for the state and town that they run, and instead want to pretend as if Pete Buttigieg was the king of East Palestine and could have stopped this if only he wasn't so busy eating caviar atop his throne. It's been blame game by the right for weeks, since the very moment this happened. All we've heard is, where's Pete? Where's Biden? As if those people simply stepping foot in that city is going to undo that damage. It won't. But you know what would have? Better regulation. And you know whose entire governing philosophy revolves around deregulation? Here's a hint. Together, let's cut the red tape. Let's set free our dreams. And yes, let's make America great again. And one of the ways we're going to do that is by getting rid of a lot of unnecessary regulation. Thank you very much. Thank you. So this is what we have now. This is where we were in 1960. And when we're finished, which won't be in too long a period of time, we will be less than where we were in 1960, and we will have a great regulatory climate. Okay? Come on up here, Chris. Come on. You work so hard on this. Yeah, Elaine, are you okay? Come on. Yep. You okay? Yep, fine. She has a lot to do with it. She has things called roads. That's a big, and bridges, right? Yes. Okay. One, two, three. Yeah, weird how you've got the leader of the GOP throwing himself a ribbon-cutting ceremony for slashing the very thing that would prevent train derailments and chemical spills, and yet somehow a train derailment and chemical spill are the fault of the party that actually wants the regulations. Please, somebody, Make it make sense. And look, none of this at all is to shame the people of East Palestine. You can vote for whoever you want, and you should. I'm not here to criticize someone for voting for Republicans, and especially not when they're contending with a horrible crisis in their town. But I am going to criticize Republican officials and Republican media figures for lying to those people and pretending that somehow this is the Democrats' fault, at the same time that they push for more deregulation, which will inevitably lead to the next East Palestine. Ted Cruz, just a few days ago, while this situation was still going on, tweeted, Texas is booming. We need to move the rest of the country in the direction of low taxes and low regulation. This has boosted wages and created jobs. That was this week. The extent to which these Republicans have zero capacity to recognize the direct consequences of their own positions would be amusing if it wasn't so dangerous. And one final point here. Can we please stop with this performative bullshit about how elected Democrats don't care about Republicans? Like three weeks ago, Joe Biden was in Kentucky with Mitch McConnell celebrating a bridge that will connect two states that didn't vote for him as part of an infrastructure bill that will help literally every state in this country and which includes broadband for rural America, which votes almost exclusively for Republicans along with a chips bill that led to an explosion of manufacturing jobs overwhelmingly in red states, not to mention getting lower prescription drug costs regardless of party, capping out-of-pocket costs for seniors at $2,000 a year regardless of party, giving veterans health care regardless of party. I don't think there is a single legislative accomplishment that won't help Republicans and Democrats alike. I mean, my God, if the Democrats bent over backwards any further for Republicans, they would snap in half. But while we're on the topic of playing favorites when it comes to disasters, remember Remember, when Trump was president and Hurricane Harvey hit Texas, Trump was there right away. When Hurricane Michael hit Florida and Georgia, Trump went right to the Gulf Coast. Whatever they needed, they got. But when wildfires hit California, well, California should be ashamed of itself for its, quote, gross mismanagement of the forest floor, and Trump threatened to withhold federal payments to the state until they, quote, get smart. Weird how Tucker didn't mind the preferential treatment then, but when you've got Pete Buttigieg standing in this small red town, and when you've got Governor DeWine admitting that Biden offered to help immediately, that's still somehow not good enough for Tucker Carlson, who traffics in a reality of his own making. So if anything is clear here, it's that these accidents will continue to happen 
happen because Republicans are still laser focused on deregulation. And when they do happen, Republicans will continue to blame the Democrats because it's not about the truth, it's about scoring a cheap political win. And if anyone would know about that, it's Tucker Carlson, the guy who knowingly lied to his audience about the 2020 election, and the guy who continues to lie to his audience to this very day while cosplaying as some champion of the working class, even though he is a millionaire working for billionaires and pushing for policies that hurt everyone else. Before you go, if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. You can click the thumbnail right here on this screen. And if you want to support my work even further, the best way is to subscribe to my podcast, No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen. There you can check out my interviews with major players in the world of politics, including President Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, Elizabeth Warren, Katie Porter, Jamie Raskin, and so many more. Plus other interviews that live exclusively on the podcast. That link is also right here on this screen, or just search No Lie with Brian Tyler Cohen wherever you listen to podcasts.